I saw a tweet a while back about Breath of the Wild that went something like this. How is a system that actively encourages you to not take up combat to conserve resources in a game about exploration a good system? You never skipped a BOGO camp to save your cool weapons? Now, this tweet probably strikes a chord with many of you, myself admittedly included to some extent. Breath of the Wild is a game that champions player agency and freedom, and yet, it's ironic how most of us ended up adhering to one unspoken rule above all else. Save your cool weapons at all costs. The debate around Breath of the Wild's weapon degradation system has always been heated, but before I give my two cents on that, I have to come clean about something. I lied. This tweet isn't about Breath of the Wild. It's about Tears of the Kingdom. So what is this guy on about? I believe our buddy here has fallen victim to what I like to call the Breath of the Wild mindset. Have you ever manually navigated your way out of a cave in Tears of the Kingdom, only to realize you could have used a Sen 10 minutes ago? What about waiting out in the rain instead of using a sticky elixir? Yes? Well, congratulations. You too have been duped by the Breath of the Wild mindset. To put it into words, the Breath of the Wild mindset entails approaching Tears of the Kingdom much like one would approach its predecessor. This can be done in all sorts of ways, but I believe that combat is where this mindset can hurt a player's experience the most. You see, a system centered around weapons breaking inevitably leads to the problem of discouraging weapon usage. This leads players to hang on to rare weapons for fear of not having them when the time is right. I believe there to be three fundamental issues with the weapon degradation system, all of which Breath of the Wild succumbs to and Tears of the Kingdom rises above. But let's put a pin in that. Fuse is a brilliant ability that is as intuitive as it is useful. For the uninitiated, Fuse is an ability you obtain early on in Tears of the Kingdom that allows you to attach just about any item or object to your weapons, shields, and arrows. From a flamethrower to a slab of meat, you can fuse just about anything, leading to hundreds of possibilities. This feature fosters a culture of foraging, exploration, and experimentation, igniting the player's mind with all the possibilities to be had. Each new item or object makes you think, what could this do? Furthermore, Fuse injects immense creativity into the combat of Tears of the Kingdom. You can fuse a shield to your claymore in order to block attacks, a ruby to your shield to ignite your foes upon impact. A pretty standard enemy tier system was established in Breath of the Wild, wherein the level of an enemy's attack power and health corresponds with its color. Tears of the Kingdom overhauled this system by giving each color variant a distinct feature, as seen with the horns of Bokoblins. This not only lends diversity to each enemy tier, but also rewards players with fusible resources that scale alongside their progress. For example, a black Bokoblin horn is stronger than a blue Bokoblin horn. It's a wonderful gameplay loop. Defeat enemies, gather resources, and craft better weapons. Now, with the basics of the fuse system down, let's take that pin out and get into the meat and potatoes of this discussion. The three fundamental issues with the weapon degradation system. They are grinding and inventory management, player agency and freedom, and player engagement. In Breath of the Wild, strong weapons are mostly obtained through dangerous means like a venture into Hyrule Castle or, alternatively, by farming a specific enemy encampment after every blood moon. While the occasional expedition into the heart of Hyrule can be fun, it can also be overly stressful or monotonous. The latter can easily be said for farming encampments. This pursuit of specific strong weapons results in a significant loss in player agency and freedom. Breath of the Wild boasts a plethora of awesome weapon designs, but most fall by the wayside in favor of just a few. The system's fallacies detrimentally affect player engagement through poor enemy balancement. Silver enemies in Breath of the Wild are damage sponges whose sole purpose is that of dropping precious gems. The player is unwittingly exchanging weapon longevity for monetary gain, making what should be rewarding fights feel mundane. You never skipped a Boko camp to save your cool weapon? I think we all did. These all create an experience that many find extremely frustrating, and I think Nintendo knew that and wanted to remedy it. Unlike Breath of the Wild, the base strength of a weapon in Tears of the Kingdom does not fully matter. Because enemies yield progressively powerful items post-defeat, even the weakest weapon will still prove useful when fusing with an enemy drop. There is rarely a need to wait for a Blood Moon to respawn weapons, and enemies are so plentiful that you don't rely on Blood Moons in that regard either. It is essential to highlight the non-combat utilities weaker weapons offer. You can be 250 hours deep into the game and receive a rusty broadsword that still has use as an ore crushing hammer or a tree felling axe. This situational utility is a brilliant way to keep the player's weapon arsenal fresh. Additionally, the emphasis on enemy drops simplifies inventory management by allowing the most crucial weapon components, enemy drops, 
to stack within the inventory. This not only liberates space, but also minimizes resource management concerns through an effective sorting system. Fuse inherently promotes a simpler inventory management system and heavily promotes player freedom and creativity. You can have your stronger weapons and resources, while so many lesser resources still keep their utility. Stack these positives on top of the beauty of fusing almost anything to your weapon, and multiply that by the increase in durability you gain from fusion, and you'll have an equation for a flawless weapon degradation system. Well, almost. There's a couple counter-arguments I'd like to address. While fusing all sorts of objects to weapons is engaging, and the range of possibilities fuels creativity, the player is more than likely going to find only a subset of these combinations truly effective or satisfying. This leans the player toward a smaller set of optimized fusions, limiting the overall potential of the system. A lot of games fall into this trap, and honestly, Tears of the Kingdom is one of them. Realistically, you'll only be using a fraction of the fuses available in the game. That being said, I believe it to be a surprisingly large fraction. Furthermore, you could argue that Tears of the Kingdom incentivizes grinding only a few types of enemies constantly, in line with Breath of the Wild forcing you to grind only a few specific types of weapons. I don't think this is a major issue for the average player. As the game progresses, your weapons and resources progress in such a manner that you still get by even without taking down Lynels and Taluses. Finally, I think many people will still be trying to point to the fact that a cool weapon is still too valuable to use on anything other than a mini-boss. Thus, Boko camps are irrelevant. To this I say, if you really find yourself with so many cool weapons that you don't have room for less valuable ones, then maybe it's time to go demolish a Boko camp.